so bright in here. Should we have any aspirin? Hi, welcome to In the Labs with Tim Sway. I'm Tim Sway. I am super excited to share this project with you because this is the first In the Labs project to feature the new version of Aspire, version 10. Um, I created this project, there's wooden shot glasses in version 10, and I'm going to show you how I did it, and there will be a free download available for all Aspire users. What I like about doing this series, and particularly um, for me and hopefully for you, is that unlike the other people that do these series that are, have a lot of experience and knowledge about CNC's, uh, I don't. I'm relatively new to the game, uh, and so when I get the opportunity to make these projects, it gives me a chance to create a project that pushes my own boundaries and envelopes, and then to share that learning experience with you. So hopefully you will learn something along with me. Maybe you'll even be watching and yelling at the video like, no, don't do that, that's not gonna work, because I don't know yet. But um, I feel like that, that process is somewhat interesting for me to watch at least, and I hope for you, and it helps us learn, because then you can see the mistakes I made and learn from them and apply them to the future work that you do. So I'm gonna show you all the things I screwed up on this process before I finally got what I consider to be a pretty good wooden shot glass. What, and the other cool thing that's about this is I did it without using a rotary, a fourth axis. Um, which I thought would be cool. So the big challenges that I had with making this, well, I'm not gonna tell you about that now, you'll just have to watch. On the surface, this is a pretty simple project, but I did run into a couple issues with, uh, you know, parts holding and machining and etc. But so what I wanted to do was make a round object without a lathe or a fourth axis rotary. And so that meant creating two halves of it and then gluing them together. So first I created some geometry to apply to a two reel sweep blader. You can see that there, those are the diameters of the top and bottom of the shot glass. And then I created the profile of the shot glass by just getting two rectangles to the widths that I wanted and, uh, and then editing the larger one down to get that tapered look. It's important that the width is the same as the depth of the model I'm going to create, so I end up making a circle and not a oval shape. And now here I, I had a big kind of piece of wood that I was planning on using, so I got a little cocky thinking I could copy and paste and make six of them, but I ended up only doing one at a time after having a couple problems just to save time and, and wood. So with my basic geometry created, I copied the outline shape, deleted the top and bottom, and then that gave me just those two exterior rails that I was able to apply a two rail sweep to to create the basic exterior shape of the shot glass using those half circles I created before. On Vectrix website there are lots of videos showing about how to use a two rail sweep if you're not aware how to do that. So that worked out pretty good and then I went to the other side where I copied all my geometry and I took those same two lines but I moved them in about I think about 0.15 inches in from the outside um, so I could create the inside shape that would be the exact opposite. Um, at first I went like this and I kind of went, I colored outside the lines and you see I raised it up from the bottom as well so there'd be a shelf. Uh, created the sweep, inverted it, and um, after I cut my profile out that stuff there won't matter so I just sort of made it a little bit bigger and voila there's my basic shot glass shapes. I ran a simulation and I just used a quarter inch end mill and a quarter inch ball nose and um, everything looked pretty good. I was pretty happy with it except for I wanted to just clean up that top edge a little bit where I dished out the inside. And here I discovered a new feature in version 10 that I didn't know was there that I was really excited about. Check this out. I can click on two separate vectors in node editing mode highlight two nodes from two different vectors and move them simultaneously at the same time. Whereas before you would have had to have done one line at a time. So this makes it so much easier to keep things parallel instead of like counting clicks on one side and moving to the other. I brought those back in, I recreated that toolpath, and I tested it again. Now it was looking a little bit better and it was time to move on. The other thing I wanted to do on the shot glasses was I wanted to put the Aspire logo with version 10 to sort of celebrate the release of the new 
software, but I also wanted to put some drinking CNC puns on it. So I grabbed a Aspire logo off the internet and imported it into the software where I was able to use that really cool feature that turns images into vectors. Simple enough. That part was done and then I created a version 10 in a very simple Helvetica type font that looked similar to the Aspire font. And I had a lot of fun thinking up some drinking CNC related puns. <laughs> These are a couple of the first ones that I came up with and I had a couple more um, that I didn't like as much but then what I decided to do was ask some of the pros. So I went to some of my friends online and asked them to come up with some drinking puns and there's a lot of really funny ones. Uh, some of them were better than others and you will see the one that I ended up choosing later in the video. A concern I had while doing this was the radius that I have curved is so steep I was not sure how well I would be able to actually carve into it around the curves. Of course the simulation doesn't see a problem with it but I thought it might be a problem and I figured I'd just start cutting and find out. I had this piece of reclaimed Kumaru decking left over from my last In The Labs project where I made a kitchen multi-tool called the Sporkchilla. If you haven't seen that, make sure you go check it out and download the file to create one of those. I put it onto my Avid CNC 2x3 benchtop CNC machine, set it all up, and opened up my G-code in Mach 4. Now this is my first time using Mach 4, and I am impressed with it so far, but I did have a couple adjustments I had to make that screwed me up. Um, and I lost my zero. I'll talk about that in a minute. But here you can see I started roughing out the shapes and um, that ball nose was a little dull. But you know, the thing I always talk about with CNC that I love so much is that it is like having another set of hands in the shop so I can do other things while my CNC is working. It's just maximizes my efficiency. Once the inside was done, I took it off the wasteboard, reset my zero right to the wasteboard, and drilled some pilot holes into it so I could align my piece when I flipped it over. I didn't want to put tabs on these for you know a lot of reasons, basically because I'm lazy and I don't want to sand. So I'm going to try the old two pieces of masking tape with some CA glue in between to stick this down. I don't have a lot of surface um, area that's going to be left to do that to, but I think it's going to be okay. And the other thing I have to do, of course, is I have to line it up. So I did my typical uh, dowel holes and then flipped them upside down and put them in the wasteboard. But um, I'm going to have to do the masking tape thing at the same time. So what I did is this time is I drilled the dowel holes all the way through. Normally I would just put them like a half inch in or so. Now on the wasteboard you can see I have drawn them in. Uh, and I know that I'm working around this, this line right here so I can use my pencil tip dowels and I can find the hole with one. There we go. And then I can find the rest of them pretty easily by just lining them up to my line here. And now I know I'm in position. So I think what I can do now is I can do the masking tape with the super glue in this area and then put it down and line it up like that, let it cure, and I should be able to keep my shot glasses still and cut them all the way out. Let's find out. If you're not familiar with this technique, basically what you're doing is making your own two-sided tape, but this is way better. You just put a ton of CA glue on one piece of masking tape and then stick it down the other piece of masking tape and you can hold small parts for machining without any clamps being in the way. It works really well. There we go. We'll let that sit for a few minutes. Hey, this is interesting. Long story short, I just had a little mishap um, and I lost my my zero. It's unimportant, but uh, so I, I have to pull this all up. But this is not a big deal because of this the system. I can put my router now anywhere on my CNC board and just run my my guides file again and then put this anywhere on the board and it's going to work just fine, which is um, apparently what I'm going to have to do. So. That's why it's going to be in a different spot for the rest of the video. <laughs> like I said earlier, this was my first time using Mach 4 and I had to change some settings on my laptop to send the G-code to it properly. It ended up sort of basically crashing. I don't have a great laptop that I run this with. Uh, and then when I went to carve my details in, I started running the problems, which I expected. The first one got a little bit wrecked because uh, I was messing around with the depth and, uh, and testing it, but um, 
The other two look like they came out pretty good. The curve is so steep that even though you apply the file to the curve, the bit has a difficult time cutting because it can't actually like rotate around and cut in like that. It has to stay straight in the CNC. So the edges are a little tough. I shrank the text down a little bit and I might shrink it down just a little bit more. The other thing I did is I switched the text on the other side so it was going the long way and then more of it was on the high surfaces so the machine was better able to compensate for the curve. I used an eighth inch end mill to cut out the profiles and check them out. Spoiler alert, they look like garbage. So I had two of them out of six come free, um, which isn't too bad. And you can see that there's a little bit of a, uh, I got, I must have, when I had my Z issues, got something a little messed up because I had a couple problems off camera. Uh, so they're not perfectly centered. So what I'm going to do is I think if I just add, um, I, got a, I got a couple ideas to add some tabs to it. I'm thinking on these ends instead of here and uh, that should solve some problems to keep them still. So I might just run it again and see if I can get a better fit with these new tabs before I go any further. I added some pre-made quarter inch tabs that were in the vector clip art library and then I put tabs in my profile toolpath right on top of them at the same width of a quarter inch. So this way the tabs extend past the model area that I'm carving and they will get carved in and then when I cut my profile out the tabs will stay with it and then I can just cut those tabs off the top and bottom. I ended up putting four of them on for the final batch but right now I was trying with three into that piece of countertop cutoff that I had laying around. So here I am sanding the tabs off and, and the, sanding the edges a little bit and gluing them together to see how they look put together but the graphics that I had carved in didn't come out very good and they all got sanded out in the process of fitting. Um, I still hadn't quite figured that out yet. But more importantly, you'll notice that when you look at the round surface on the top, it's not even. It's about two millimeters more wide on one side than the other side. And I'm not quite sure why it happened, but I have a couple suspicions. Here's another one where you can see it. I think what's happening is that while I'm doing my finishing pass, the machine is actually pushing the wood down and it's bowing a little bit. So it's coming down further on one side and then on the other side it's under release and it's coming up. Uh, I thought the best way to fix that would be to add support at the top of the cup. So I took that interior dished out path and I modified it so I didn't carve out all the way to the top but I left a little about five one hundredth of an inch lip on the top of each side and I thought that might help the, sh the cup keep its shape under the milling process. Um, and that helped quite a bit, but it was still a little bit off, you'll see in the finals. And I think if I just slowed my, my ball nose tool path down uh, and just slowed everything down a little bit, that might correct it. The other thing I did was I was trying to cut these shot glasses at one inch thick and I was using one inch thick stock. So sometimes there were some imperfections in the wood and there'd be a little flat spot on the top. So now I took a block that's a little thicker. I think the piece I had laying around was 1.23 inches thick. Um, and that way I was actually carving the entire top shape out. I didn't have to worry about it possibly being flat in one spot. Um, so here it is. I, I brought the file down with four tabs to just one at a time and uh, I, I blew the text up and ran it down the high point of the curve and started cutting them out. Quick sidebar, another astounding new feature in version 10 is these little things that make me happy, like the way it now merges toolpaths. You can see it's done differently where the original toolpaths get put together in a group. So now when I want to go and recalculate all my toolpaths, I don't have to delete my merged toolpath and then re-merge them. It just figures it all out. It's awesome. This is a piece of walnut cutoff from firewood, believe it or not, and I switched to a new ball nose that was giving me a smoother cut, and you know, there's nothing like walnut. Now it was time for the real test to see how my inlays would come out, and uh, they came out much better. It was much easier to carve on that high surface. But if I were to do it again, I might try to make them just a little bit deeper because there is some sanding involved later, and I'm, I was worried about sanding them right off. A soft wire brush works great for cleaning up V-carves. 
I dyed a little bit of 5 minute epoxy and put it into the Aspire logo little leaf shapes that are there. Unfortunately it blended in with the walnut real well so you couldn't see it too good but on a lighter wood that would work better. Uh, I like doing inlays with glue and I also have that white CA glue by Starbond that I use to fill in the rest of the letterings and uh, it's just a super simple way to do inlays. So now once I had those done I glued my two halves together and uh, let that sit for a while before sanding off my tabs and sanding off that extraneous disc that I built on the top of the cup. So I sanded the bottom flat just by hand real quick and then you can see I set up a little jig to just make a visual line on that cup for a while I hand sanded the top end and make sure I didn't get all crooked uh, so I was able to see it on all sides. Um, if you have a disc sander that would work better than this because uh, this wanted to throw the cup across the room while I sanded it so just be careful know your tools know your safety and know what you're comfortable with but um, I just sanded the top off. If you don't have power tools, you could do this with a piece of sandpaper, just tape down to your workbench too. It just takes longer. There is a risk of getting crooked though, and that's why I drew that line. And here you can see my half circles are still not 100% perfect, but they're much better now. I think adjusting the speed and feet of the ball nose toolpath could help alleviate some of that problem, but everyone's machine is going to be different, and so you're going to know your machine better than me. I didn't go crazy sanding it, I just put a little beeswax polish on it, and uh, there you go. You can see that red is hard to see in there, but um, it's there, and I know it's there. As with all of these in the lab projects, they are available for free download at Vectric.com. If you log into your VNCO account and you go to the section where they have the downloads and the projects, you will find the actual file I used to make this and you can just open it right up and make it yourself. All the tool paths are there and you can very easily just change the text to make it say whatever you wanted to say. Now I wanted to do some sort of CNC drinking puns and I came up with a few of them on my own and then I reached out to all my very clever friends in the maker community and people over at Vectric and at Avid CNC to get some input and my favorite one out of all the CNC drinking related puns that uh, we came up with I have to give credit where credit is due Jeff Shaw of Ideal Grain came up with know your tolerances and that is something I apparently do not thanks Jeff don't drink and can friends don't let friends CNC drunk <laughs> but seriously you know be safe in the shop, know your limitations, know your tolerances, and if you do make one of these, make sure you make it out of wood that you know is safe to drink from, do a little bit of research, or just make it for decorative purposes only. Okay, that should keep the lawyers happy now. Well, I hope you learned something in this video. Uh, I know I did on this project. I thought it was going to be a piece of cake, and then I discovered that the real world is sometimes a little more complicated than the digital world and I had to make some adjustments to do that. I feel like I learned a ton about my CNC machine, a ton about the software, and a ton about myself and my patience level, <laughs> as well as my tolerance. So know your tolerances, download the file and make your own. Thank you very much for watching, and please be good.